not be specialist led. However, we do have a sports specialist. Her name is Ava. She's going to be hopping around between pickleball and tennis, soccer, and basketball. So she might be there, but in case she's not, I'm going to give you some activities that you can do at basketball for all different age groups. The Pac-Man is the tagger. The stars are the runners. The um, Pac-Man and the stars have to stay on the lines of the basketball court. You could play one of two ways. You could play every time the Pac-Man tags the stars, they get eliminated. Or you could play when the Pac-Man tags the stars, the star has to sit down and becomes a speed bump. This means no one can get around the speed bump except for Pac-Man. Champion ball is similar to knockout. Players one and two stand side by side at the foul line. They bounce the ball three times and then they shoot. The first player to make the ball into the hoop becomes the champion and they stay at the front of the line. So let's say player one and two shoot the ball. Player one scores first. Player two goes to the end of the line and players one and three will now face off. Basketball, baseball is another fun shooting game. You're going to split your campers up so they are in two even teams. Uh, pink will be on the left in this case, and blue will be on the right. Player one will go first. Player one on the blue team will try to shoot a foul shot. If he makes it, that is considered one out. If he misses, he grabs his rebound and gives the ball to player two, who will step up to the foul line and start to shoot. Player one on the pink team starts to run and cover as much distance as possible. Their running route is going to be their side of the court, so half of the court. When they get around, they have completed a lap. They'll tag off, and player two will start to run. The pink team continues to run and get as many laps as possible until all three foul shots are made by the blue team. When all three foul shots are made by the blue team, the pink team stops running, and they count their runs. At this time, the roles will be reversed. Pink team is the shooting team, and blue team is the running team. You can play up to 10, you can play up to 20. It is up to you and your group. All of the courts are gonna be labeled this summer. This will be court number one, court number two will be in the middle, and court number three at the far end. When you get down to the basketball courts, there will be a mesh bag with the basketballs inside the bag, or you'll find the basketballs at our washing station, um, maybe laying out to dry in one of the crates um, from a previous group. So you will find the basketballs in one of those two areas. When you start your activities, 
your group can use the basketballs there. When you end the activity, you need to make sure that you are dunking the ball in at our washing station in the sanitizing uh, solution, and then you are putting it in a crate to dry for later groups. tennis on your schedule we would really 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 encourage you to play pickleball because there are three courts that are six feet apart from each other um, behind you are the tennis courts you can go on the tennis courts but sometimes there might be members on them so it is best to try and stay on this side and play pickleball. please remember that you need to wipe down uh, the pickleball rackets and the tennis rackets that your campers are touching and that you're touching so at the end of the period you're going to wipe those handles down and you're going to put them back into the shed. If you've never played pickleball before I attached a quick video that goes over the rules and the game and how to play. Pickleball is played on a rectangular 44 foot by 20 foot court. The court is divided into two sides by a low net. There are two sidelines, two baselines, a center line on each side, as well as two non-volley lines, which create two non-volley zones that are affectionately called the kitchen. The center line divides each side into two service courts, the left service court and the right service court. Every point begins with a serve. A pickleball serve must be hit underhand from behind the baseline, cross court into the opposing team's service court. The serve must clear the net and not land in the kitchen. An important rule in pickleball is the double bounce rule. The double bounce rule says the ball must bounce once on each side before either team may start volleying the ball in the air. Here is an example of the serve and bounce rule. When team A serves to team B, they must let the ball bounce once before returning the serve. Team A must also let the ball bounce once on their side. After the ball is bounced on both sides, Either team may volley the ball into the air or let the ball bounce once before striking it. The rally will continue until one of the teams either hits the ball in the net, out of bounds, or lets the ball bounce on their side twice. A unique but important aspect of pickleball is the non-volley zone or kitchen. Players may not hit the ball while standing in the kitchen unless the ball is already bounced on their side. Pickleball is a fun and exciting sport. This is our street hockey court. Down here you will be playing 5v5 street hockey. Counselors, you will get the hockey sticks and pucks from the street hockey shed to our right. And you will be wiping all of the equipment down when you are finished. The volleyball courts are located next to the basketball courts. You will be able to find the volleyballs. Similar to basketball, they will be either laying out in a crate or in a mesh bag. Once you're done with the volleyballs, you'll have to wash it in a washing station and leave it out to dry. Some games you could play are Nukem, Volleyball, and Keep It Up. As you can see, this is our backyard games area. This field is lined, so you can play in this area and have your space. Some backyard games are Can Jam, Cornhole, Spike Ball, Ladder Ball, and washers. All right, this is our fishing area. Um, we might have a fishing specialist this summer. We're up in the air. Um, we might not. So if we don't have a fishing specialist, counselors, it's going to be very much on you to make sure we're following all of the cleaning procedures and we're staying six feet apart from the other group. There will be two groups here at some points, which won't be an issue because as you can see, Walton Pond is nice and spacious so one group might be here and the other group might be out there on the dock um we also have new fishing rod uh storage areas for them to dry because we do have to wipe down the handles and make sure those are sanitized so counselors with your spray bottles you'll make sure to wipe those down and then they will go back on um, the storage rack and those fishing rods will also be numbered. You do have so. to remember down at fishing is when there are two groups 
two groups can't be together getting set up and getting their fishing poles. So if you come down there and there's one group that's already trying to get set up, the counselors are passing out the fishing poles, then you got to come up with a plan B. Maybe you scope out uh, where the best fish are with your group. Um, make it sort of fun like that. You can go try and find worms in the time being. But you got to do something and you got to be flexible during this time because we can't have two groups uh, intermingle with each other. DIY arts and crafts. Yes, that means do-it-yourself arts and crafts. So uh, this is going to be an activity period that is counselor-led. There will be a bin for lower camp, a bin for middle camp, and a bin for upper camp with all of the supplies that we have for this activity inside. This will be located in the basement of the lodge. So what we want you to do is go around the back side of the lodge and that door will be unlocked for you to go in and grab the bin. What's really, really, really important for this activity period is counselors, you are one, creative, but two, you are in charge of passing out all of the supplies because the campers can't touch the supplies because then we need to wipe everything down. But counselors, we can get away with you reaching in and handing out all the supplies. Now, this is not a free-for-all. So what we would like to see is counselors, you come up with a craft or a little project to do with your campers. You give them each of the supplies and then you lead it, similar to what Rachel's going to be doing at Arts and Crafts. It's going to have to be a little bit different this summer, which is okay and we can kind of make it cool and I'm sure many of you have really, really creative ideas. So if you've ever been to a paint night where somebody's up and they do like one stage of the drawing or the painting um, and then the campers would follow along and then you'd kind of instruct them as they go. So something like that is what we imagine for this station. What we don't want to have happen is everybody just goes into the bin, grabs what they want, uh, and then the bin comes back empty because you have to remember everybody else in camp is doing this also. It goes from scouts all the way up to Navajos. And yes, we have separate bins, but we want to make sure they're fully stocked for the uh, rest of the groups. So this is the newest addition to the ninja course, which is also counselor led. Um, there are lots of different obstacles on this ninja course. We have a whiteboard that holds all the times and then a timer to time the kids and they try and get as fast as they can through the course. One of our brand new activities is Adventure Trail. So this is essentially an escape room um, on a trail at Winding Trails. So instead of breaking out an, an escape room, which usually has lots of locks and different types of things you have to solve, uh, this is going to be on a trail. There are five boxes and the campers are going to be looking on the trees for clues. Uh, anything might be along the way on the trail that can help them get into the box. Counselors, you're just going to have a script to read to them in the beginning and then you're going to have hints to help them get into the uh, boxes and the locks if they need help. So here is an example of something that you might see on the trail. Shout the answer out if you think you got it. It's a three digit lock. towards orienteering to get you prepared.
sometimes Fred gives us a hard time and he gets stuck, so you might have to move around a little bit until you can get him in his shed. pavilion this summer is going to be arts and crafts. When you enter with your group, Rachel, the arts and crafts specialist, will be here to lead an activity. Um, counselors, she's going to ask you to see your group maybe at one picnic table and then as another group's coming in, she might ask you to sit at another picnic table six feet apart. There will be two groups down here at a time usually, so just listen to Rachel. She'll help you out. Counselors, when you come into the pavilion after your campers are seated, Rachel's going to have supplies for you. You're going to go up to Rachel. You're going to grab the supplies. You're going to bring them back to your uh, campers, hand them out, and then Rachel will lead a craft in the space that she has. All right, so this summer, uh, different from previous summers, Boating, if you have it on your schedule, you are going to enter the boating um, area through this set of stairs and this nice little dock over here. So, All right, so this is our nice boating dock area. Um, this summer, there will be a rack here holding the life jackets. There will also be a lifeguard or the boating specialist, whose name is Jordan, up here helping to size and put on all the life jackets safely for the campers. Um, we're gonna go down there and I'll show you why we're doing it this way this year. All right, so um, down at boating, the life jackets have to be sanitized every single time they come off of a camper. So this is why we have a clothesline system this summer. Um, once the life jackets are sanitized by our boating specialist, they will be hung to dry and then a new set will be put up on the racks that we just talked about up on the deck. So the reason we have the deck and the reason it's the most important thing this summer for boating is because as one group is coming down getting fitted for their life jackets, once they're good, they could come down here, get into a boat. As that's happening, the next group, because there's always going to be two groups at boating most of the time, will come uh, onto the deck and get fitted while these guys are getting out on the water because we do have to make sure those two separate groups are staying six feet apart from each other. All right, so as you can see, our soccer fields are lined. There is a mini field next to the soccer pavilion. We have a bigger field coming this way where the goals are. And then there's gonna be another mini field on the other side. So there will be three soccer fields. Each goal will be numbered so you know where you are supposed to be going. range we have two archery specialists that will be helping out down here um, there will be two groups down here at all times one group will be on this side there's gonna be a chain that kind of blocks off where they are supposed to go and then the other group is gonna be on this side so we could say uh, socially distance apart from each other um, a new thing this summer is going to be uh, lanes going down on each of the targets so when the campers shoot and then the archery specialists give their signal that they can go pick up the arrows. The campers are gonna stay in their lanes, walking straight down to the target. They're not gonna take their arrows out of the target this summer. That is going to be the archery specialist job so they can wear gloves and we can stay sanitized. Um, the campers are just gonna pick up any arrows that are in their lanes. There might not be, so they won't have to go out, but if there are, they have to stay in their lanes. We're gonna have a clothesline to hang arm guards because the arm guards are gonna have to be dunked in sanitizing solution and then they're gonna be hung to dry. The arrows are, are arrows and bows are also gonna be wiped down by the archery specialist. And then once again, each um, bow will be numbered. All 
right, this is our mountain biking shed. Adam, the mountain biking specialist, will be in charge of taking you throughout the trails. Um, campers will get a hairnet. You will also get a hairnet to protect yourself from the helmet. And the bikes will also be numbered. Adam will take uh, the lead of cleaning those down for you guys. Um, and that's pretty much it for mountain biking.